but thanks for coming here. And, uh, um, my English is also not very good, uh, but I have no interpreter follow me, so <laughs> so I will try to speak clear. And uh, if something you don't understand, please interrupt me at any time. Uh, we are talking about the real time kernel, so. Um, the question is also should be real time. Um, I'm Alex Shi. Uh, currently, I'm the linear stable kernel maintainer. Um, today's topic will go through. Um, actually, is a quick introduction for the anti-Linux most false um, folks on the Linux kernel. Here is today's agenda. Uh, we will talk about what is um, real-time OS, that's the uh, definition of OS. And uh, uh, currently, uh, Linux Foundation has uh, an RTL, that is RT, uh, real-time Linux project. We, we will talk we will talk this data. And uh, uh, I will introduce something about the RT testing, also tracing. That is a very important feature of the for the RT tuning, and then the main the main contact is the reasons of latency and the current solution in the this kernel for this. And uh, finally, uh, we will we'll see some resources that is useful for real time. Uh, what is this RTOS? So um, someone maybe thinks this RTOS should be a really fast OS, or someone may think um, it, it could give some uh, maximum throughput. Um, but actually, a number of them is right. Um, even you want to uh, average latency on the RT RTOS, this cannot be achieved. Uh, what the, the RTOS gives us is the uh, pretty power latency. Also, another word is a uh, deterministic latency. Uh, if we uh, look into the details of the RTOS typo, um, you can find some some typos on the public wiki. That is um, hard real time and uh, Film real time, also the soft real time. Um, the definition for the hard real time is means um, if you cannot get response in the before the deadline, you will get a critical failure. Uh, some old example I don't want to speak again. Uh, for this soft real time, that means uh, you can miss some response before your deadline, then would uh, downgrade your college server. But uh, that would uh, cause uh, some severe sequence. Uh, actually, there are many, many RT boys currently. Uh, in not only the open source, but also some closed source. We can um, get up. We can get a quick check. Um, lots of them was list here and um, also include some um, Zephyr or M embedded, which currently uh, Linera also work on. We can see a um, most of platform um, I use ARM Cortex A. Also, some of them are ARM Cortex A. Uh, let's go back to my slides. It's um, RTL project status. Um, RTL is uh, currently is the Linux Foundation owned project. That's I want to merge all uh, RT code into the upstream Linux kernel. Um, the main members of the, this project is um, the leader. Um, will be the Tom's and uh, 
five, five, my, my, five courses. That is uh, Sebastian, Richard, Anna, and uh, um, Ben Vick. Uh, also, in the general, we still have three, three courses and currently spend some time on our clinics. That is uh, David. Is David here? David. Hi. Right. Uh, Matthew. Hi, hey, Matthew. Yeah. Also, Alex is me. Um, currently, the most so called of RT, uh, RT is, is more into R3. Um, some famous one is the high solution timer, also the thread, thread interrupt. Uh, also, we know the log dependency of F trace, function trace. Both of them are come from the RT project. Um, there are still some some few code out of kernel now. Uh, you can check on the RT RT project git, git repository. This is about um, four thousand pipes, more than um, sorry four hundred pipes, and it's less than uh, twenty thousand lines. The fundamental of the RT kernel is the sleep locking. It's um, it's try to make the spin lock, um, make spin lock sleepable, also preemptible. And uh, the second important thing I think is should be the interrupt um, preemptible. Um, we we all know in the kernel we use uh, IQ server to um, hold some. IQ uh, critical region, but uh, now it's also preemptible by the uh, a local lock. It also sleep while spin lock. Um, not only of this, um, but also there are also lots of optimization for the uh, CPU hotspot timer, memory, soft IQ, uh, CU, um, plus many uh, bug fix or quicks. This is uh, current RTL status, project status. Um, when we talk the RTLs, the measurement is very important and some critical for this is um, in, in my testing currently uh, on the two of the 96 bolt, the maximum latency uh, can be achieved less than two, 200 microseconds in a busy system. Um, and to do this testing, um, if we use uh, RT kernel, um, we must choose the RT4 uh, kernel setting. The, the other, like, uh, the first one is uh, priority none. Priority none is used in the server, this means um, no preempt at all. And the second is a preempt volunteer is used for desktop. The third one also uses the only desktop. Um, that's is a little bit more aggressive than the uh, preempt volunteer. And uh, also the uh, RTB means the real time desktop. It is kind of between the uh, low latency. Low, low latency current and the, the RT4. So RT4 is the full uh, preemptible um, based on the sleepable and preemptible spin lock. So um, in the RT project, we often need to do lots of tracing to find um, the reasons and where we have the latency, the reasons of latency. Can see an uh, example of latency. Um, maybe <laughs> it's hard to see. Um, the the this, this example is to um, tracing is to a tracing of the wake up. This is RT wake up means a uh, RT task wake up. And uh, uh, first, we close the function trace, function trace, because function trace will give a 
a lot of extra latency. And then we start the tracing um, with uh, a priority sleep. Um, so finally, we close the tracing flag and to see what's the result. Uh, in my example, the, it's run on my uh, hockey ball. It's, uh, we can see the ball has uh, SCPU. And the, the biggest latency found on the CPU 5, that is more than um, 600 microseconds. Um, we can find uh, the biggest problem is on this schedule. And uh, um, the time is spent uh, between the two, uh, two entries. It's after trying to wake up and uh, before the schedule. So we try to wake up and uh, then uh, we get more than we get about um, 800 latency, then the task gets scheduled. So it costs a lot of time. Um, because it is uh, a simple introduction, I don't go to so uh, very details. And uh, in the real world, you may like to open the function trace to see w w what happened between the two, uh, two of steps. Um, next, I will go through some of the latest reasons and uh, how to deal with in in current in kernel. I mean the uh, current uh, RT kernel. And we can see um, we can go through some of the CPU and memory devices. Also, some of the interrupt scheduler and. Uh, the power management also give us some of uh, side effect on the latency. Um, but actually, the most important in the RD kernel is um, how to deal with the SMP sync up. Uh, here, I, I think is the um, most issue is on the spin lock. capacity and system lock. Um, we also can see the last um, the last session used uh, the CPU board uh, the board that's the CPU uh, more than high or equal to the one gigahertz and uh, this is one gigahertz CPU frequency request that uh, I found on um, on RTBP but. Uh, Sadly, it didn't give me the detailed reason why it's at least one gigahertz. But um, on the other side, on the other side, we can calculate for this um, requirement, like the current platform, like uh, x86 or ARM Cortex. Um, a Cortex switch need um, hundreds instructions, and for one gigahertz CPU, it means um, one nanosecond for our instruction. So a hundreds of instruction. That's also may may plus some of the hardware hardware delay like uh, you need a flush out PLB and uh, should refill your memory page memory table. So um, that's time cost uh, at least one nanosecond. At least one a uh, more per second. I mean a uh, hundred nanoseconds. So oh, consider this. Uh, one gigahertz CPU frequent is um, it makes sense. And um, for the e this is not the if your system is too is too overload so um, absolutely it will give us some of the more latency. So um, how to tune your system or how to um, to achieve your uh, maximum latency. There are some of the solutions for, for this. The, um, the uh, last session also talked talk a little bit about the CPU isolation. And, uh, um, for details, we can see some of the isolation, isolation wave. 
like um, you can use task set uh, to pin your tasks on some CPU that is CPU affinity. And you also can use uh, ISO CPUs in the boot, boot command line, uh, which can access this CPU from the system load balancer. Also, there are some of the some of the papers uh, instruct how to isolate the CPU, how to uh, reduce the system the CPU diff from case ways. Yeah, uh, delicate results for RT task. I uh, like you can um, pre-log some memory space for your RT task, or give some special, give some more delicate results for the uh, for your RT task. Uh, the second hardware is should be the memory, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, the memory we can find um, here. I pull the memory from the software side. We can we, we can see the uh, if our page fault happens, the pay the memory page reclaim may cost a lot of time. And uh, if your system is using a sweep, uh, that's the sweep based on your hard disk, that also costs a lot of time. And uh, the frequent frequent is a big issue if your architects want to allo allocate uh, some many pages. So the current workaround here is um, uh, from the user space layer, you can pre-allocate memory for your architects, and uh, uh, you can use the slab for the uh, best defragment. And uh, um, the third one is still outside the upstream kernel, but it is uh, in the RT kernel now. The reduce the page allocate uh, locking reason. Um, then we talk about uh, the devices and also the interrupt the, the issue of, uh, the, the latency issue because of the, the first one may be uh, so some devices may hold uh, DMA bars for a long time. And um, the interruption, interruption um, we can see it from the different side. Um, for some of the RT tasks, you may, you may don't want the, your task to be interrupted by some other interrupt from devices. But on the other side, um, if the interrupt uh, you wanted, like the network you want to get a quick response, maybe that's interruption you want to get get very quickly. Uh, so um, for the RT task, um, it hit the interrupt, it hit the interrupt. But on the other side, um, the interrupt, uh, that means um, I interrupt trip into kernel and then I give a response that's time um, maybe you want a uh, very short. Um, in the kernel software, we can we can find some of the interrupt was desirable. And, uh, so this addition will, um, will give more latency, will give more delay if that's in front if you want it. The current solution is um, the threaded interruption is already moved into the upstream kernel. Uh, uh, the advantage it can give us is um, prior only a priority and uh, the second is um, preemptible. So uh, with this um, advantage that's uh, give us help as we can choose some interrupt that we perform and give it high priority. And less some low level of priority preemptible. And uh, we talk about the I2 desirable. And uh, this, this solution is still out of the upstream color. This is, um, you can use the Local schema, 
but that's that makes the IQ design for preemptible. Uh, the firmware advice. Uh, actually, I have no much idea, and uh, it seems the article didn't talk, uh, didn't have some clear solution for this. This is uh, some device routines, if like um, some of the interruption may like defining the firmware or bias, and uh, some of the security features that's used in the firmwares, like trust zone, etc. Um, if the uh, RT task depend on this, so it seems the kernel guys can do nothing. Uh, second, we talk about the power management cost. Uh, we all know the power is a critical feature for the modern system, but it also gives us a big side effect. That is, um, usually the CPU and cluster, the C center, that means idle engine or idle exist, also cost um, hundreds of seconds. So uh, probably you can use the PM uh, QoS to control the the C state or, or P state. Oh, if you, if your system is very quick, very critical, you may don't use don't use them. I mean, uh, totally desirable the P or C state. Um, the thermal setting. Um, I point out the thermal setting because when I use my hockey ball to do testing, the overheat problem is um, very clear, very obvious. Um, sometimes the uh, a busy system may be uh, too hot, and let, let not ball uh, even reboot. So a, cooling, a, better, a better cooling system is very important. So we start uh, a little bit about the software issues and uh, schedule cost. Oh, oh, still some other issues. TLB flash and uh, cache flash and uh, palatable refill, also some other system log. How to re uh, how to optimize um, this kind of situation? Um, we know the priority tasks, the currently we have um, five or our run robin uh, the deadline, um, which can give us a real-time tasks more priority, that can preempt the normal tasks. Um, but now the, on the article now we have the the spin out is sleepable. So it's caused another problem. So the normal task may be preempt each other. That will give extra system burden on the contact switch, also the call coach, call catch. Um, so in the article now there are there's there are features named the lazy preempt. That means um, only the RT task can preempt each other. And the normal task cannot pre preempt others. Um, this two of them uh, is uh, only in the normal kernel, like the lazy memory replace, also the TLB flash rate. Um, even on the x86, um, the hardware didn't support the rate flash for TLB, but the software can support this. Um, finally, we guess maybe the most important part for the RT kernel, that is um, the base stone of the C lock and RT lock. Um, for the normal for the normal kernel, the C lock um, may in the modern system um, we always have the multiple system. Maybe uh, some of the CPU are 
as uh, on spin lock. Uh, that will cause problem on the RT system. So the fundamental for the RT kernel is to make the spin lock, also the RT lock, um, sleepable, also the preemptible. Um, that's made um, that's made by RT mutex. Um, RT mutex, um, may, I, may I talk a little bit more about the RT mutex that's uh, forced to resolve the pre op invention, also the pre op inherent. Um, but here you can see um, if uh, a spin lock was pre amped or getting to sleep status, uh, this task also said migration desirable. Um, so we can think about if the migration is enabled on the sleep, sleep, sleep ball, uh, sleep spin lock, is that okay? Um, actually, from the functional side, the migration desirable, um, we don't need it. It, it's all, it can be enabled. But you can think the, the most worst issue. This is um, maybe all of the all of spiel, all of tasks which wait on the same spin logs may paint on the same CPU. Uh, actually, because the um, because all of the spin log tasks, um, which can, which is is okay to to sleep on the same CPU, and uh, it have no the deadlock happened. But the issue is um, with a preemptive spin lock, maybe um, the most pre most preemptive task finished, and then. Um, it needs to cause the next, cause the next tasks. So if all the CP, all the tasks simply on the same CPU is, is cause the performance issue, because the cache is cold and uh, the wait is long. Um, RT locks. We talk about the RT locks um, currently. Uh, the RT lock change is still out of our upstream kernel. Um, rather, it's um, biased. If, if the code was changed, the rather biased RT lock. Or uh, sometimes we need to use RCU to replace the RW lock. Um, For the pre-empty invasion, the pre-empty invasion is the is very important in the RT kernel. Um, the situation is here: if um, uh, a task A is on the log uh, log one, uh, it wants to grab log one, but uh, currently the log one owned by C. Actually, the task A has the highest priority, and task B the second uh, priority. The C is the last. Um, so, the, in the normal status, the task C will finish its task, and uh, and then give back the log to A. But uh, um, at the time. The task B is uh, get launched, and because it has a higher priority than C, so it will preempt task C. And uh, so, 
um, because C didn't finish the task, it still holds the log one. Um, so the, the result is the task A, which has the highest priority, it needs to still wait this. It is still need to wait the log. Um, wait the log. So that is a priority invasion. We can see the result is the highest pre priority task A was uh, preempt by uh, no priority task B. Um, there are many solutions um, in the current computer industry, but uh, on the this kernel, uh, we use the priority inherent. Um, this is made uh, in the RT mutex. Um, the solution is, um, we can see if um, in this situation, if the C was created by B, uh, because C holds the log which A needed. So the solution is we carefully increase the priority of C, give the same priority as A, so then um, B cannot preempt C. So C can be finished, and then it can give back the log to the high priority A. So that's the solution of the priority current. Um, this, um, this chart shows the priority chain, priority chain to chain. Um, the, um, if the A is the highest, has the highest priority, and um, a new task G uh, insert into the blockchain, and uh, uh, but the G has the most high uh, priority. So because it wants to hold the log, uh, the log two. Um, so, uh, how to give the quick response for the whole system, right? Uh, because G is, uh, has the highest priority, it's the most important task. Uh, the solution is we give all of the um, right side tasks with the same priority of G. So, so the low priority tasks in the low code chain can be finished, and then the G get uh, its time slice. Is there any question on this slide? Um, actually, we saw some things. Um, currently, the RT, the RT, RT tree is here. And, um, for the RT kernel wiki, the second one is the old wiki. Because the next foundation uh, on the RTL project now, so all of the information moves to the first wiki. The another is the RT maze we can look at here. Also, the uh, some of RT testing resources you can find uh, from the Nano because uh, those those benchmarks were enhanced by the Nano. And that's uh, a little better than others. Um, the IRC, uh, IRC channel is here. Um, so, the summary. Um, the RTL project is, so uh, the target is, um, any code of the RT means RT means code, code should be getting to the upstream. Uh, actually, uh, two years two years before, uh, I think it should be um, 2015. Um, the Linux Foundation announced uh, it want to achieve this target and make all coding to upstream in two years. But currently, it's still maybe half of them is still out of upstream. Um, 
The second is conversion is for latency. Um, that's is two point I two most important point I think uh, the, in the up upstream call. And uh, also it's a resource of RT. Uh, the expansion weekly. Actually, you can find anything from the expansion weekly. Um, that's it all.